Welcome to the After Hours of TC Rustani, the podcast. I am emanating from my podcast penthouse, my esteemed panel of experts, and we're going to go around the horn right now and introduce them. I'm going to start with you, Mr. Vinny Capelli. How you doing, Vin? Once again, it's good to be back on, on the air right now. Sitting next to this guy, of course, too. I can't believe who I'm sitting next to. This is amazing. And I can't believe who you're sitting next to. We do. We're going to introduce him right now. You've, 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 we've known him. you loved him for years. Boomerang Chastain. What's going on, Boomerang? Not too much, really. I'm doing good. You, where do you get that hat? I mean, I wish I... I'm going to take a... Um, p- Dan gave me oh, Great. It. I'm going to take a picture of that and tweet that out because that is a fascinating hat. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. South Boston Jeff is in his house. How's it going, South Boston? Oh, it's going pretty good. Same old, same old. You know it. Having a ball. And let's welcome to the program. He is our audio technician, but tonight he is now a member of our STEAM panel, the one and the only Airwolf. Chris is here. It only took like 16 years. <laughs> well, you know, you, you, your, your arm wasn't long enough to come outside and talk to us. <laughs> and of course, last but certainly not least, the one and the only, the living legend himself, Colonel Beaumont. Hey, guys. It's a podcast Friday night, and we're here live. Unbelievable. I got to ask you a question, Colonel. What do you think about Boomerang Chastain's hat? Well, that's the first time I ever seen a cowboy hat over Boomerang Chastain's head. Wonderful. That's fascinating there. All I, right, we, I got a question. Where did you find the, the, the man... The myth, <clears throat> Boomerang Chastain from. I mean, I just can't believe you actually found him. I, we've been looking for him forever. Well, he, he, been? he is from the land down under. So, uh, is it, that a Duran Duran song? It could be. You know, he's he's resurfaced, and uh, I love the hat, Reno. I mean, it, seriously, Reno, Boomerang Chastain. I love the hat. You Wherever know? he was found, he was found with the hat because it looks like that hat's been through thick and quite thin. Quite a bit of stuff. I just yeah. have one question. One question. What? When you put that on, that hat goes on. Do you think you're like a sexy boy or a sexy? Oh, his pants oh yeah, break. I'm Shawn oh, yeah, Michaels. His pants break. Oh, you, you're Shawn Michaels. Of course. Can you can you sing the song for us, Reno? I'm just a sexy boy. I'm too sexy boy. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. Unbelievable. Speaking of fantastic, the response we got from last week's debut of our podcast, Worldwide Phenomenon, and I want to throw out some shout-outs out there to especially our good friends across the pond over in jolly old England, free jolly old England now, our good friends at the Geek Force. The Geek Force out there love us. We love them. Colonel, you even I gave know. them a special shout-out out there. They listen to us right now over in jolly England, maybe at tea time. What do you think about that, Colonel? Well, I just want to say hello to the mates out there. Guys, we love you. USA loves you guys. So have a good night over there in England, hey? I got to say something. Go ahead. There's nothing better than a smoking hot geek female. I mean, there's just something about them. I mean, just they're just... There's something about a geek who's just smoking hot. And then she's British, and she has the British and the accent, accent on top oh of it. Oh, my yep. God. I mean, you talk about I'm 6 to midnight like that. Yep. Ah, done. Unbelievable. What? You know, we have a topic here on the program. We're here in the Boston area where we uh, taped this program. And uh, the biggest news of the week in Boston was a 72-year-old cab driver named Buzzy found $187,000 in the backseat of his car. And guess what he did? He turned it in like a good in Samaritan. In cash, by the way. In cash. And here's the kicker. The person who lost it was a homeless guy. Yeah, he, it was inheritance, right? Hey, Bull, that is an Uncle Buzzy that you and I know, right? No, it's not. <laughs> All right, me, and, me and Bull know Maybe an Uncle Buzzy. Deal, yeah. You know, TC, it's one of those people that we, we choose not to bring around you because... Oh, he's one of those cousins, huh? One of those cousins. <laughs> oh, I was making sure it wasn't Cousin Buzzy. All right, here's what I got to ask you here. All right. I've never driven a cab before. I've been in many cabs before. Now, Vinny, would you have turned in the money? If you dropped a two-dollar bill on the ground, do you think I'm going to turn that into you? No, of course not. Of course not. If if you know Boomerang Chastain over here dropped fifty cents, I ain't giving it back to him. He don't have fifty hey, cents. Trust possession me. is nine tenths the law. So absolutely not. I mean, hey. I'm a rich bastard. The way, the way I, I look see at it, it, you got to give some of it back, and then the good karma comes back again your way. Well, yeah. The- what's gonna happen? He's gonna drop dead. Well, not no. You give it to other people. Well, speaking of karma, do you know how much reward Buzzy got yeah, for his this troubles? Yeah, bullshit. All right, this is how much he got there. This homeless dude who got an inheritance of one hundred and eighty-seven 
thousand dollars in cash in cash in a in a in a brown bag gave buzzy a hundred bucks i would have kicked him in the face what a cheap prick a hundred bucks yes yes colonel well i heard the bag that it, it was an onion bag that was the money was in. it was an onion bag yeah. it was an onion bag Unbelievable. Now, would you would you have given back the hundred eighty seven thousand dollars to to the homeless guy, or you would have gone down to Vegas? I would go to Sin City in Vegas. So you would have kept the hundred eighty seven thousand. Is what you, you you're, you're a dishonest person. I think you learned that from Velvet the cab driver. Would Listen, she? You're all scumbag. You would, would all te- you would, would all keep it? Would, whoa, 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 whoa! And you're gonna sit here tell us that you'd give it back? Are you gonna really? I gonna, said you really want back give, some? Yeah, you'd give it back a dollar and say sorry. I, I couldn't find your bag, but I found this dollar. That's what I I give him so a back. So I could advice. get good karma. That would be my. Yeah, that's all. Speaking of good karma, uh, Boomerang Chastain, would it's you have karma sitting right there? Would you have given back one hundred eighty-seven thousand dollars? No, I wouldn't. What would you would have done with the one hundred eighty-seven thousand? Well, I'll keep it. Obviously, probably would have bought more hats. <clears throat> yeah, or, or another boomerang. We can girls. only hope. You what? Oh God! Buy hookers. <laughs> yeah. You- <laughs> <laughs> well, now look at look at Jeff. Jeff's all like, oh, that's, you're talking my language over here. Yeah, sure, sure. I, I, Jeff, would you have returned one hundred eighty-seven thousand dollars? Oh, like the same thing uh, Chris says. I I would have uh, returned uh, some of it, but uh, yeah, probably uh, maybe half of it. <laughs> what about you? You would have returned it? Yeah. Oh, I, I would have. I would have not returned it. I would have kept it, but returned some to other people. Okay. What? <clears throat> Given away, I would have paid it forward. Is what, what, what I would have say. done. If this was 25 years ago, I would have kept it. But now they all have those dash cameras on the cabs and whatnot. And the Louis De Palma back at the garage is probably watching you. And he saw everything that you did. So unless well, he, it would have been an easy well, payoff. Let him fire me. Hey, Go ahead, fire me. I'm a 72 year old cab driver. What 187,000? In, in my plan, giving that guy <clears> money <throat> to pay him off counts as. Yeah, I forward. would have said, yeah, exactly. Here you go. Here's five grand. Yeah. Shut up. Okay, yeah. well, well, some of you are honest and some of you are dishonest. But the big, big... M- wait, wait, stop, stop, stop. you got to be dishonest. I'm being honest about being dishonest, which makes me an honest person. <clears throat> well, the, the, the jury's still Vinny, out on that one, Vinny, Vinny Capelli. Capelli. has never been an honest person. <clears throat> wow. Ne- never yeah, in his entire never. life. Never. Wow. All right, but what we're going to talk about now is, as we record this, we are just hours away from the big announcement of who's going to be the mega millionaire. It's up to $508 million, a half billion dollars. I'm going to go around the panel right now and say, if you won this, what would you do with $500 million, That's Impressive, Colonel? Well, if I won it, I'd, I would buy... Um a men and women's roller derby team. A men and women's roller derby team. What, were your good friend Planet from last time? Yes. Uh-huh. By, by, the, by the way, uh, TC and the cats here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Planet told me to say hello to you guys. That's great. What did Planet have to say? Planet goes and she wants you to buy, uh, buy a league. Well, if, I, if you won $500 million, you're going to buy a roller derby league. That's right. Is, I got a question. <laughs> Now this planet, right? Is she named that because she's the size of a planet? No, she's she's her name is planted from a from a from the wicked pisses. Right, right. Well, well, her right name's planet, but is, did she earn her that mo- name because her, she's the size of her a mother planet? and father didn't baptize her? Oh, let's let's call her Planet. No. Okay, so that's just a nickname. Correct. Okay, all right. Just thinking that perfectly okay, why clear. Is it planet, though? So what would you name if you owned the wicked pisses? Women's roller derby team. I have to ask, what would you name the men's team? I would name the Boston Bruises. Boston Bruises. The wicked pisses no. and the Boston Bruises. <clears throat> wow, that's original there. With five hundred million dollars, you couldn't yeah. come up with a better name than that. What's the mascot for the Bruises? My mascot is Bruises. It would be a bottle yeah. with the hey. black eyes. I think I have a perfect. Listen, if you win, hire me. I know who we can get as the mascot. Oh. We'll get Boston's <laughs> own Boomerang Chastain. Boomerang Bostonian no, Chastain. No. no, I get a better one than him. Who, you? No. Who? Quincy. Oh, uh, Big Lou? Mm, <laughs> no, no, Big Lou works for me. We no, work for and me. Uh, Sidewalk Sam. Oh, God. Who the hell is Sidewalk Sam? Sidewalk Sam How's was the artist. A mascot? It would take him half a day to paint it. 
Who was Sidewalk Sam? For those out there that don't know, like me. Sidewalk Sam was in the was the gentleman Pat Boston with the chalk. He made the chalk paintings on the ground. Okay, well you learn something new every day. I, I didn't know who Sidewalk well, Sam was. Well, understand you're not from originally here, from Boston, right? Yeah. right. Well, yeah. And neither you. You're from Brooklyn, but you know well, who yeah, well, but, still, but I've been here long enough. Now. I thought Sidewalk Sam was like a, a national. <clears throat> I, I, I I don't know who Sidewalk Sam is. I know the guy Jeff. You know the guy that used to be on uh, Sesame Street that painted the numbers. Uh, that was the mad painter. Uh, that guy, uh, I'm going to paint a seven. He See? was probably a pedophile, seven. too. He was Bentley on the Jeffersons. Remember the annoying English neighbor? Yes, he oh, was. That guy? Oh, that, uh, that was uh, Benedict him. was yeah. his name. Yeah, Benedict. Definitely probably a pedophile. All right, unbelievable. All right, going around the panel again. Reno, you had f- won $500 million. What are you doing with the $500 million? We know what you're doing. A- we know what you're doing with the 187000 What are you doing with $500 million? I'll buy a house. A house? For my family. Okay. And I buy a car for my father. Okay, that's that's you know you still have a lot of money a left over. Guy. I, I buy like three houses. <clears throat> three houses. Where 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 in the world would you buy them? I'll go to Florida, California. Yeah. And New York. And New York. Oh, good, good, good locations. And uh, would you buy an endless supply of chicken wings? No. Nah. Why not? I don't know. Because he likes chicken fingers. Oh, that's true. I'm, I'm sorry, chicken fingers. You like, huh? No, chicken wings. Well, if you do win five hundred million dollars, four hundred ninety-nine million of that's coming back to yours truly, because that's about how much money you owe me, right? Yeah. Boomerang. I saw yeah. multiple <clears throat> transactions where you were, yeah, absolutely. And, right, right. He owes you a lot of money. And the most you ever give me back was forty bucks. Twenty plus years of it too. Twenty, almost, that's right. that's almost, right. almost thirty. Actually, that's right, almost thirty. Okay, Vin, you won five hundred million dollars. What are you doing? Let's just put it this way. You'll never find me. I'm going to buy an island. I'm going to buy an island, huh? I'm going to buy an island. Yeah. I'm going to say screw everybody. Okay. I'm going to send um, the Mrs. Capelli her divorce papers. Okay. You, uh, have, to, you have to sign a prenup first. That, exactly. <clears throat> right. Exactly. You should, um, what you should do is divorce her, remarry her, and before you remarry her, sign the prenup. Don't tell her. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah, with the 500 idea. million. That's a good idea. Then, then, you won't be able to then I think I'm going to take uh, Leanna Decker. Oh. I was actually looking at some of our old footage. Leanna Decker. I'm going to bring her on the island with me. Yeah. Along with, uh, what's her name? Alyssa. Who was the girl from last week? Oh, Allison Alice. Wait. Yeah, <clears throat> Allison. Take her. I'll grab, I'll build a time machine, go back in time, get Michelle Pfeiffer. Oh, that's right. And uh, and live happily Have myself after. a couple of menage a trois. But well, you're French all of a sudden. Oh, I'd learn French too. Your wee wee will be very <laughs> yeah, <laughs> satisfied, yeah, yeah, right? Exactly. All right, Jeff, you went five hundred million dollars. What are you doing with it? Well, uh, I was thinking of uh, probably buying a castle of some sort. Yeah, he uh, Reno wants a house. He wants an island. All I want is a ca- you know. I was all, always wanted to own Castle Island and make that my own. You know, stay close to South Boston good, and everything. Good fried clams down there, by the way. Oh yeah, we uh, went down there uh, uh, over the weekend. Uh, over the weekend, uh, we, we got some fishing in. Yeah, and, with your yeah. buddy Willie. Yeah, we uh, he reeled in a, 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 a reeled in a stingray. Oh my God, yeah, it was that? And we have video of that. You actually. know what you could do? You could buy Alistair Crowley's mansion and put it right on Castle Island. Well, uh, doesn't uh, Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin still own that? Thing? I don't know if he still owns it. Or not. I, I, Jeff, I you could buy it from him. Stole though. it, but uh, yeah, uh, Castle. I mean, uh, with all that money, uh, like uh, I, I, like I uh, just live out the rest of my days uh, in somewhere like uh, in some castle over in Europe. Uh, I, I could see you building a replica of Castle Grayskull. Oh, that would be kick ass. That would, that would be kick ass. That would right, that would rule. And bull, you could be Cringer. <laughs> 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 no, I think of him more of his now, beast. Now, CC, what? Who is Quinja? Who? Yeah. I what? What did you say? I Quincher? never. I never heard of Quinja. Well, I don't know who Cringer, that is. I said, uh, I said I'll Cringer. I'll clear this up. Uh, all right, uh, Cr- uh, Cringer in the uh, uh, well. Uh, he Man owned uh, Castle Grayskull, and uh, Cringer was He Man's cat. Well, Battle Cat was. He-Man's well, cat, well, well. Let's let's. He didn't own Castle Grayskull. That's what gave him his power. Remember, right? It was I mean, actually the the sorceress who actually owned Castle Grayskull. Well, yeah, she ran it. But this is something I was talking about. Uh, it, it, it wouldn't if you were Skeletor, wouldn't you be pissed? Wouldn't you want Castle Grayskull if if your face was on it? Exactly. Yeah, that's that's gimmick infringement. Yeah, I, I'm surprised they never came out with a comic book about that. But that's who Cr- Cringer is. He's, uh, <laughs> He's a big cat. That turns into Battle Cat. Oh, right. Okay. All right. So you, I think we you got could, Trap Jaw sitting next I, to I think you could pull that up. Actually, he looks more like Orko. Orko. Yeah, yeah, Orko. 
All right, uh, Airwolf Chris, uh, yeah. you want $500 million. What are you doing with it? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is get my helicopter pilot's license. Then and you'd get, be really Airwolf Chris. And get Airwolf. I would actually. The yeah. real Airwolf. Oh, I would. would why you, not? Would you dig up Borgnine? Oh, that man. Yeah, I would, I'd have a, a life size replica made and stuck no, in the No, just dig up the real one. I don't know. He's stuffed it in the front Kinda seat. Dirty. What, you then I'd, I'd be taking care of my friends and family, obviously, and then uh, disappearing from this f-ing country. I'll tell you that much. Unbelievable! With the big f bomb there, he's talking out there. But what would I do with five hundred million dollars? I thought about this long and hard over the week, and this is what I would do. First thing I would do is I would buy the Playboy Mansion. All right, move into. I the, don't know if you can get it for five hundred million. No, it's. I was on sale for two hundred million. But I read about it. It's all filled with like cat piss and all this other stuff because <laughs> it all doesn't the, come with the. Chicks. But you you were there a long time ago when it was when it was healthy. Right. All right. But now Hef's gone a little senile and whatnot, and all the playmates that live there, their dogs and cats do number one and number two all over the house. So Gross. I'd have, I, I'd it's have to. Been, it's been quite a while since we've heard from Hef. <clears throat> yeah, a long time. Uh, I would actually. Uh, this is what I would do. I, I'd get twelve of my all-time favorite Playboy playmates, dress them up. In Princess Leia slave garb from Return of the Jedi. I like your thought. And we would play strip Star Wars trivia while eating Elio's frozen pizza. And having one boob out. Yes, exactly. Well, yeah. that, that, that'll be the first thing right there. That, that is what I'm going to do. Uh, that's it? What, what, that's a good start. Would you show them your Wookiee? <laughs> <laughs> Chewbacca, yes, he would. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you know. You know, get in the uh, your furry oaf. Don't don't tell me what you smell. Uh, so that's what we do with the five. Pit. Five. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be nice. Yeah, you be nice out there. This is a family show out there. I hope I hope the geek the the geek force uh, fellows out there are enjoying all of our. Are there any ladies on the geek force? Uh, you know, that's a good question. I don't know. I will have to ask them. Find out. I will. I will tweet them. Have them have them send me a picture. Oh, that's right. You like uh, you were just talking about the I geeks. I love geeky women. Oh. Uh, have you ever seen uh, what's that? What's that cosplay chick's name? Vamp. Yes. You know who I'm talking about. Oh. I forgot what her first I name is. I love them is. all. Oh but yeah. You, have you ever gone to these uh, comic cons and seen all these broads dressed up in these hot stormtrooper outfits? Uh, actually, actually, once. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and amazing. It wasn't just the stormtrooper outfits. Oh yeah. Well, I'm talking the Tomb Raider outfit, the Chung Li from Street Fighter. They dress up as everything. Chung Li was wasn't he in not uh, Chung Li? What, what is her Bloodsport? name? Is? <laughs> No, nah, what? No, that's Chong Lee. Oh, whatever, Chong Lee, Chong Lee. Uh, but yeah, th- there are some really, and I mean some really smoking hot women that are just geeks, and I love it. Fantastic. I love it. I love to show them my nerd. <clears throat> and on that note, what we're going to do is we're going to take a big time commercial break. When we come back, I have a big time celebrity interview with none other than James Tolkien. You know who that is? You know who James Tolkien is? Slacker. You got that right. Mr. Strickland from Back to the Future. Coming up right after this big time commercial break. This is the After Hours with T.C. Rustani, the podcast. Hi, my name is Allison Wade, Playboy's Miss May 2006, and you're watching After Hours with T.C. Rustani. Enjoy. Alrighty, welcome back from that big time commercial break. It is celebrity interview time here on After Hours with TC Rustani, the podcast. Recently, I caught up with my longtime close personal friend, James Tolkien. James Tolkien, of course, played Mr. Strickland in the Back to the Future saga. He played Mr. Slacker himself, the principal that everybody hated, but we all love. And let's go to that interview right now. All right, I am here on location at the Northeast Collective Extravaganza, and I am here with none other than one of the greatest actors of the 20th century. I'm talking about my longtime close personal friend, everybody's favorite disciplinarian, James Tolkien, a.k.a. Mr. Strickland from Back to the Future. How you doing, sir? I'm doing pretty good. Hey, Steve Clark, thanks for wishing me a happy birthday. I'm sorry you're not here to shake my hand. Of course, we're referring to Stephen Clark, the BackToTheFuture.com executive director and longtime close personal friend of mine who said, when you see Mr. Tolkien, wish him a happy birthday because he's outstanding. What do you mean one-time personal friend? Long-time personal oh, friend. Long-time. That's better, of course. <laughs> a long time. That makes sense. <laughs> we go back a long time, back 2008 in Gettysburg for the DeLorean show. We, we hung around. We had dinner. We, we drove around in DeLoreans all day. I remember it well. It was really a beautiful summery day in Gettysburg. 
unbelievable. Now, let's talk about your career. You've been in some of the biggest motion pictures of all time, Serpico, War Games, Top Gun. But in 1985, a little film produced by Steven Spielberg and directed by Robert Zemeckis skyrocketed you into pop culture. What was it like, and how did you get cast for Mr. Strickland in Back to the Future? Oh, well, I was doing a Broadway show. I was doing a... Uh David Mamet's play, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross on Broadway. And I got this uh, offer from a guy named uh, Robert Zemeckis, who I didn't know at that time, to do uh, Back to the Future. And I, I've always said, I'm never going to Hollywood until they send for me. And I said, okay, this is my chance. They're going to send me. I'll go out and do Back to the Future. And, of course, nobody realized that it was going to be such an important picture. But uh, I, it, it, was, uh, it was one of those marvelous uh, events where all the planets were aligned and Back to the Future became this, this shooting star of a movie. Has anybody ever come up to you and said, I became an educator because of Mr. Strickland? No, never. But they, I've often heard uh, that, that I remind them of a certain uh, disciplinary uh, uh, factor in their life. I can see that. You remind me of some of the gym teachers I had back in the day. Well, yeah, of course. You probably needed it. <coughs> no pun intended there, Mr. Strickland. I mean, Mr. Tolkien. Uh, now, uh, we're talking about 1985. Back to the Future was the number one grossing film of that year, and you followed up the, the next year in 1986 with Top Gun, the top grossing film in 1986. That's going to be awesome to put on an actor's resume. I'm amazed that you remember and know all this. I, I almost forget. Now, here's the big question. Was the line slacker scripted, or was it something you ad-libbed on set? It was absolutely scripted, and it was such a brilliant stroke for uh, Robert Zemeckis and Bob Gale to use that term, and it's become uh, a classic term in, in, terms, of, uh, in terms of everything. In that. If, if somebody screws up, they're a slacker. How many times in the last 31 years have you called people a slacker? Well, I think I, they call me a slacker as much as I call them a slacker. Well, anybody calls you a slacker or a big-time slacker because you're awesome. I'm here with the one and the only James Tolkien, Back to the Future Part 1, 2, and 3. Which one was your favorite? Part 2, the second move, so the second one. It was so nutty, so crazy, and so much fun. I absolutely agree with you. Everybody who knows me knows Back to the Future Part 2 was my favorite of the trilogy because it was kind of three movies in one. You had the future, the alternate 1985, and back, in, of course, into 1955, into the original movie. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, right. Mr. Tolkien, it's been an unbelievable pleasure. I know you have a line here, 100 miles long, of all your fans that want to get your autograph and take a picture with you. Anything to say to your fans out there at backtothefuture.com? Well, I know I'm fighting them off, but uh, I'm very glad to take a moment to have this interview with you. And, and give my best to Steve Clark. He's a great guy. He's a slacker. Uh, well, we're all slackers. Just like he said, we're all slackers. Every single one of us are slackers. Now, what a career that guy has had. Not only the Back to the Future films, he was in Top Gun. That's right. That's he, right. <laughs> he was in Top what did he Gun. Do in Top Gun. No, he was he was the captain. Orig in the beginning, he's the captain of the ship where he goes to Maverick. He's like, you two characters are going yeah. to Top Gun. <laughs> yeah, he's chomping yeah. on the cigar. Yeah. So, and at yeah. the end, he's the one who like blows the smoke in Maverick's face. He's like, Top Gun? He's like... God help us all. Yeah. Just like I, I mentioned in that interview, in 1985, Back to the Future was the highest grossing movie of the year. He yeah. followed it up the following year with, with Top, Top Gun, Gun, the highest grossing movie of 1986. You know, the crazy thing is, he hasn't aged a day. He looks the same. And I, I was and gonna, he seems like an awesome guy. I was going to ask him, Jesus, didn't that guy ever have hair? Uh, no, he was awesome. I was down there for my friends at backtothefuture.com. They're the ones who hooked up that interview with uh, Mr. Tolkien, who is unbelievable. We've known him for a long, long time, and every time we meet him, he's always been gracious. A really, really awesome dude. Yeah, now, I got to talk to him, too, about uh, none other than Masters of the Universe, because he did, uh, He was in uh, the Masters of the Universe, the Courtney Cox one. That's right. Yeah, uh, he got oh, to meet... Oh, that's right, he was. Oh yeah, he played that cop, and uh, yeah, like, uh, and yeah, ended up uh, back in Eternia and got to retire in Eternia. He, yeah, he got to retire with the broad who was on uh, Saint Elsewhere. She played one of the nurses on Saint Elsewhere. Remember that Boston uh, mm -hmm. hospital show that yep. took place in, a, uh, in an autistic kid's head? You don't I remember. Say. You don't <laughs> yeah. say. I never wow. knew that. I don't remember that. Um, <laughs> uh, he was other movies he was in. He was in War Games with Matthew Broderick. Yes, that was a good well, movie. he was like an eighty. He's like in all the eighty classics. He was indeed. Um, he was also. And uh, remember a movie called Turk 182? 
Uh, Robert Urich was a fireman who uh, got injured on the job, and his uh, brother, Timothy Hutton, the uh, city wouldn't give him his health benefits, and even though he, he saved somebody, and they said he was drunk uh, off the clock, and but he still rescued this girl, and they wouldn't give him his medical benefits. So uh, his brother went on like a, a spray painting campaign all over the city and uh, to get make awareness for his brother, and he was one of the mayor's uh, supervisors in that. I don't remember that one. It was, it was a pretty... You know what movie I could have pictured him in, though? What's that? He could have been in The Breakfast Club as... You know, as what you call the it? principal. As the principal, he yeah. could have been the principal too. Yeah, he that. would have been a better principal. Yeah, say, so mess with the bull, you get the horns. Yeah, you can see you know. <laughs> speaking of slacker, the, speaking of the bull down there, bull, are you a slacker? He's slacking something. No, I'm not a slacker. Not a slacker. All right, I have a question here. Congratulations. Uh, before we get back to talking about the interview we did, uh, last weekend was Fourth of July, right? And one of our listeners out there had a question for you, bull. Are right, you ready? Does Canada have a Fourth of July? Yes, they do. They do? Yes. Okay, that's a trick question because a lot of people say, no, they don't. I said, I said, do they have a 4th of July, not do they celebrate? Because a lot of people say, uh, no, they don't. And what happens? It goes from July 3rd to July 5th without the 4th. But you got it because you're the colonel and you're awesome. You are speechless, right? You have no, look at the look on his stone face. Stone face. He is stone face. You know, <laughs> you know speaking uh, of stone faced. Um, speaking of the 4th of July, um, my boss. Um, he met TC. He wants to know: Can we have the, can we have a podcast live from Revere Beach during the Santa Castle? You're, t- you're talking about Vinny, your boss, right. who owns the pizza kitchen, That's who right. hooked us up over the Fourth of July weekend with right. some good pizza slices that you didn't make. Well, actually, you did make them. That's Vinny with a Y, not an I. No, it's not. No, it's not Vinny Capelli. It's Vinny. I'm not going to mention his last name. Uh, Let's talk about the Pizza Kitchen. That place right there, Bull, that place should be a reality show. The amount of characters that I see walking in and out of that joint, you know, present company excluded down there, <laughs> is just fantastic. I mean, we, we, we are going to interview a guy. What's his name? Charlie? No, no I believe it's a medicine. His name is a Medicine Man that we want to interview. Medicine Man. Medicine Man? His, His name, name is Medicine Man. <laughs> That's That's my, I thought Jeff. that was my name. No, 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 no there's not, no Medicine Man. No, 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 no. Boomerang was the no, Medicine Man. This, the, the gentleman I'm talking about, he's gone to a big operation. Okay, this, the guy I'm talking about is the guy who died. That's that's what I'm talking right, about. Medicine man, yes. Medi- medicine man. I don't know what disease this guy had, or like a rare blood disease. He had. Um, okay, go on, doctor. He had di- diabetes. He had diabetes, kind of yes. like what you do, right? right. You got, that's you, a rare blood disease. Okay, yeah, diabetes, <laughs> right? And Here's Dr. Montana, Dr. Montana, you have a telephone um, call. This, this is the truth. They yeah. showed me the pictures. Okay, now I'm getting, this is a fascinating story. This guy literally was in the hospital for like a month or something, right? You're and then he, then he was in a coma, and then he died. He flatlined. Oh, they're gonna say he ate a pizza and then he miraculously came back <laughs> no, to life. No, no. no. But what's what? What the fascinating thing about it is uh, he came back to life, obviously. But while he was dead, his family took selfies of him dead. What? And he showed us on his phone. He goes, "This is me dead." <laughs> what? I was like, "We have to talk." I go, did, "Did anything happen in the afterlife? Did you see like you know?" And this gentleman works. At the pizza kitchen, he he either works there or he hangs around there. It's one of the one of the two, and uh, he was a real nice guy, fascinating guy. We need to take, I, we need to go get some road cases <laughs> and put all this equipment in the road case because it needs to. Well, stay well that's safe. Your, that's, we have to have that's your job. You're, you are ill, and, and ill we'll of Chris. Roll all that. To in the pizza, in the pizza kitchen, I I want to talk to him and see what happens in the afterlife. Is the pizza any good? At the oh, pizza the pizza kitchen? kitchen! I'm I'm not just blowing smoke up the colonel's ass because he's here. Their food, their pizza is outstanding. Really? I mean, it's the thin sliced uh, pizza. Yeah. I mean, it is. Oh, it is good. See, see, I don't know. You know, look, boy, I know you a long time, but you're also you may work there, but come on, Bianchi's. Oh, b- better than Bianchi's. I don't. I mean, know. I mean, I listen, Bianchi's listen. Seat. I've eaten a lot of pizza from from. Everywhere. New York has some of the best, but the best pizza, and this is a shameless plug, but the best pizza is in the North End. It's called Pizzeria Regina, hands down. Well, do you get free pizza at Pizzeria Regina? Of course I do. I just don't pay for the bill. Okay. <laughs> e- even, even if you won $500 million. Yeah, they don't deserve no, my But money. I'm, I'm going to give and a plug. The other, the other Pizzeria Reginas are not the same as the one ah, in the North It's a North chain. End. Exactly. It's a chain. You've got to go to the North End. Now, Colonel. Uh, big plug to the Pizza Kitchen on Revere Beach. You're down there all the time. If any of the fans out listening are going to come in and fly in and see you down there, right? 
They, they, they come in and say, hey, boy, what's happening? Okay, I, now this is another topic. Off the, uh, this is not on my list here of topics, but since we brought it up, what do you think happens when you die? Reno. What? <laughs> wait, wait! I think Reno. Tell us what just happened, Reno. Yeah, what what happened? Oh, what what, what happened? About uh, the pizza. No, no, Reno. I'm t- that was that was a lifetime ago. I'm talking about what happens when you die. When I die. What happens when you die? What do you think happens? I come back alive. You? How do you come back alive? Like reincarnation? I I had a uh, my my heart attack and the doctor told me I was in the doctor's office and. He goes, he rushed me in the, uh, the hospital. He said, you're having a heart attack. This is gold. You're recording this, right? I, I, I sure hope so. But, uh, Reno, what, what happened when you died? What happened? Yeah. And what happened? Did you see anything? Did you see Cheyenne? Did you have, like, a near-death experience? <laughs> I, I see people. Who do you, you see? saw people. Who did you see? I, I see God. You did saw- you see dead people? He saw God. What, what, what does God look like? TC, how long have you known this man? Has, uh, have you ever heard this story? I've never. That's I've never heard this story in my entire life. I've I've known Reno now for close to thirty years, and I didn't know you were dead. Now, what ha- you saw? Why is Jeff taking off his hat? <laughs> well, <laughs> to pay respects, well, of course. Yeah. Boomerang, aren't you supposed to? Boomerang can't take off his hat, but uh, Reno, you saw God. Yeah. Well. I don't know. I I died. So am I. What do we, what does God look like? Man or a woman? A man. Okay. He got a long hair. Long hair. He got a mustache. Okay. And a beard. And a beard. Is that Jesus Christ or God? Yeah. Jesus. You saw Jesus. You saw, yeah, Jesus. I saw Jesus. This is fantastic. We'll have to talk about this on future episodes, of the afterlife with uh, Boomerang Chastain, uh, Colonel. Uh, you've been rumored <laughs> to be dead. Uh, what what what? And what, on to another subject. <laughs> what? What 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 happens when after you die? What do you think happens? Well, after that uh, re- reincarnation. He believes in reincarnation. Reincarnation, huh? What what would you come back as? I would come back uh, as a pizza, probably. You'd come back as, as a pizza, as a pizza, <laughs> and then be eaten and, and then killed be, again, and then at be, the pizza kitchen. <laughs> so you want to come back? Let me get this straight. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> You instead of spending eternity in heaven, right? You want to come back reincarnated as a pizza. <laughs> That's correct. What, what 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 kind of pizza? Yeah, what fl- what would you have on you for toppings? <laughs> Bacon. Bacon. Okay, well I like his style. What else? Bacon with uh, meatballs. <laughs> Bacon and meat. I, I like his style. Hey, so, you know yeah. what? If he comes back. Both you die and come back as a pizza. Just know you're gonna wind up in my stomach. <laughs> this is fat. This is unbelievable. Are you deep dish, or are you thin slice? Are you thin crust? With a uh, thin slice. Thin slice. Thin yeah, slice. All right. Okay. Right. So, right. so, yeah. I can see thin slice. Okay. So, <laughs> I, I I don't know how to top that. So I'm gonna ask the other intellectual property in the room that would probably come up with something unique. South Boston Jeff, what what would what would you uh, what do you think happens after you die? Well, I was uh, brought up Catholic, so I was uh, right. think. Uh, well, well, if you're if you if you're a good boy, you go up to heaven, and if you're a bastard, you go down to hell, and uh, and uh, you know, and uh, everybody's heaven is uh, for individual. Like uh, if I died, uh, my heaven would be uh, like uh, you know all, all all the beer I could drink, all the, the weed I could smoke, smoke and uh, <laughs> maybe sit back to a nice Doors concert, followed by Motorhead, and um, all like the. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, uh, relive, uh, you know. That get sounds together. like a usual Saturday night at your house. That's right. <laughs> I was gonna say, it sounds familiar. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I, I, like, uh, yeah, I think uh, I was uh, raised to think that uh, yeah, you uh, you, uh, you get rewarded uh, when you're in heaven. Uh, so I, I think that's what, like, I think everybody's uh, version of heaven. Uh, well, I think everybody. Uh, well, I think heaven is individual for everybody. Yeah, it's okay, different they, for everybody. They, they, you know? There you go. All right, and Wolf Chris, you you, you died. You you what, what do you what do you see? Yeah, I th- I think uh, you know I, like Jeff. I was raised Catholic, and uh, you know I, I I do did believe in heaven. Do believe in heaven, but I also kind of believe in reincarnation. I really do. <laughs> okay, so are you coming you back could, as a pizza? I think no. I think like you know, I think you could come back and and uh, live your life and and subconsciously, uh, 
use uh, past experiences to really kind of uh, okay help, help you be a successful person. So All right, so that's really deep. And that is really deep there. All right, if I drop dead right now uh, and I go to heaven, what do I see? All right, I was raised uh, Christian down there. I believe in us Christmas and all that other stuff. Um, what do I see? Um, I just I, I just got it in my head right now. I just basically see all the uh, hot cosplays that Vinny was talking about. <laughs> Absolutely. But, uh, but if I, That's if, heaven. But if I, if I was going to come back reincarnated, what would I come back as? Uh, you know what I would come back as, Bull? A mustache comb. You. I would want to know what goes on inside that head of Colonel Bull Montana 24 hours a day. I would want to come back reincarnated as you. That would be a trip. What do you think think about that? I I have thought about that. Just imagine, look at, let's all stare at the colonel right now, all right? What, just think what goes on inside that gray matter underneath that crew cut. (laughs) I mean, you, you've lived a spectacular life, Colonel. Like we said on the last episode, you are the real life Forrest Gump. You know everyone. And everybody knows you and the people you've associated with, the things you've seen, the things you've done are just fascinating. And if you want to come back as a pizza, I think that's the greatest thing in the world. That, that's what I want to come back. <laughs> Reincarnation as a pizza. You want to come back reincarnated as a pizza. And on that note, I'm getting a little bit hungry. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a big time commercial break. And we come back. I have another fascinating question for our panel of Edwards. We'll be back right after this. Hi, I'm Sunny Leone, and you're watching After Hours with TC Restani. All righty, welcome back from that big-time commercial break. We do have a pizza on the table. No, it's not a reincarnated colonel, thank Christ. So the question right Hey, now, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, no, you no, just no, used the no, no, name in vain. Sorry, sorry. We are, 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 are Boomerang Reno down there. I'm sorry if I offended you down there. But early in the program, I interviewed none other than James Tolkien, Mr. Strickland from Back to the Future. All right, here's a question. If you had a time machine, what time period would you go back to and why? I'm going to start with you, Boomerang Reno. If you had a time machine, where would you go? Well, I'd go Florida. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, no, the question, Boomerang, now listen. If you had a time machine, not where would you go and oh. travel, what, where, what time would you travel to? Would you go to the future? Would you go to the past? I'd go to the future. Why would you go to the future for? Why? Uh, well... I don't know. You just want to see what's out there, huh? Yeah. We're going to see if you win the $500 million. Yeah. And get your hookies that you were talking about yeah. at the early in the program. Okay, Reno. All right. I think that hat's on a little too tight there, Boomerang. Uh, all right. Vinny Capelli. Uh, you got a time machine. Where the hell are you going? And don't say Florida. <laughs> I ain't going to prison either. Uh, no, okay. Uh, I think, honestly, I, I, I'd probably go... Back to like the dark ages. The dark ages. Yeah. And what would you? With wa- my knowledge today, though. And what would you want to do in the dark ages? What? Who would you want to visit? I mean, what what event in the dark ages would intrigue you to go back? Uh, you know, it'd be funny because I'd love to see like if there was really King Arthur. Uh, I'd love to see what happened during the uh, the the Inquisition of the uh, Knight Templars to see where they put that treasure. Oh, the, well, the, Nicholas, the Cage, treasure. Nicholas Cage the found one. it. He the found buried it. treasure. He found it all. But the most important ball. thing is, is I go back there because with my knowledge today, I could have the biggest amount of sex and not have to worry about STDs because I just take penicillin with me. Well, you'd have to worry about, you know, those those scurvy broads over there. I'd love it. Oh, you know me and the scurvy broads. Well, I'd love it. Just, I, they, 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 just bring a bunch, I like them dirty and rough. Just, just bring yeah. a bunch of limes with you. You'll, all, you'll be all set. Clean it right up. That's where I go. Colonel, where you going, man? I'm going back to the 1960s. What, what, what for? What, 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 what a big event in 1960 do you want to see? I remember when I was a kid, it happened in 1967, when the Boston Red Sox won the World Series for the, for the Impossible wait, Dream. Wait, 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 wait. Stop, wait. stop right there. I don't, I know, the Boston I, Red Sox did not win the World Series then. Colonel, even I Colonel, know that. Come on. You're the the Red, Sox. Red Sox did not win the World Series in 1967. I, they did not win the last time they won the World Series before 2003 was 1918. 67. No. I mean, they didn't the, win the World Series. No, they didn't. They no. had the impossible dream season. Th- that's what I mean. But why would you want to go back to heartbreak 
because they lost in the end. Why would you want to see that again? Why? Because um, my great one of my good friends that I hang around with, his his uncle Just. played right field, and he, he's up over he's up over us right now. Up in heaven. Really? Who was his uncle? Oh, okay. The, the we're late, in the penthouse. You can't go any higher. The late <laughs> Tony Canigliaro. All right, all right. All right if all if right, Bull believes still. in heaven, then he can't come back as a pizza. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you just contradicted yourself there, Colonel. You want to go see this dead guy, this dead so baseball player. You want to go player. back to 67 to watch the Red Sox build up this, build up your, you know, all this pride. And yes, only to choke in the end. You know, you know, he's not going to choke. You know they already choked. They already know. So, so are you going to interfere and make them win? Is that what you want to do? No, no. If he did that, uh, I'd love it. I, that that's the kind of Montana I know. A butterfly you see, effect. You know what would be funny? Him. You kidding me? You know what would be funny if Bull took a pizza and threw it out in the field, <laughs> and then it changed everything. No, it wouldn't be funny if I did that. They go out there, they take you out, escort you right to. Uh, but what do you downtown. care? You got a time they machine. Made him the yeah. Yeah, you got a time machine. You can you, yeah. you can hit the button and say screw you. I'm gonna go back yeah. five more yeah. minutes. Yeah. And okay. when worse comes to worse, you could uh, find yourself as a little kid and uh, give you uh, give uh, you future no. lottery no, numbers no, and uh, stuff like that. You future lottery that. numbers. You can't see your past self, remember? No, in you, those you, movies, you, you can't. You, you know, you can't touch yourself. Oh, you can't touch because right, uh, you no two walk. pieces of matter can occupy the same space at the same time. That's right. But you can talk to yourself. Or in Colonel's case, you can have a pizza with yourself. Uh, okay. All right. South Boston Jeff, you got a time machine. You can go anywhere, any event you want to witness in history. What are you doing? Okay. I'd probably uh, go back to pagan Rome, maybe. Uh, uh, ancient Greece and everything. Uh, go uh, See places like the Colosseum when it was really in action. See the, uh, see people get thrown to the lions and stuff like that. But so, the bottom line is uh, yeah, orgies. Orgies, so, man. So basically, yes. Imperial uh, orgies. I like Jeff's style. So basically... Jeff you watch a lot of Spartacus. So basically, yeah. you want to live out Caliglia. Oh, Caligula, yeah. There, yeah. there you go. Spartacus, you know, if only all Rome just uh, had one neck, he, he would say. I would make a dynamic emperor. I, I, I could see Boomerang Reno fighting in the gladiator pit down there. Yeah, I can see it now. We who are about to die salute you. <laughs> what's up? <laughs> hey, what's up? You know what this thing You know what thing runs on? What? <laughs> Did you? Did, I, I didn't give understand. Him alcohol before he came. <laughs> I didn't know. What did he roofie you? What did you just say? Deal over there. That? Are you turning into a pizza now? That's all the cheese no. in your mouth. What's going on? But then Mr. Chassie would go, "Help me! Help me! I'm hip! I'm hip! I'm hip!" Yeah, yeah, I'm hip. I'm hip. Okay, okay. Chris, you have a time I don't machine. Understand. You have a time machine. I, okay. Uh, obviously, so, you want to go back before this episode. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm going right back to 1979. 1979. Yeah, because that's going to give me a year to really prepare to relive the 80s again. Okay. I would love to just live through the 80s again. Um, I uh, That would be my goal. Go back, the music, the... Everything. The, everything. Everything about the 80s. Just live it all again. Jeff, when he said 1979, what was the first thing you popped into your head? Uh, Jaws, right? Bro, the Warriors. Oh, oh. Yeah, Jaws was before 1979, wasn't it? Jaws was 77. 75. No. Yeah, well. Mr. IMDB over here got everything wrong. <laughs> what, all right, wait, wait, wait. Now, okay, so you go back to 79, but the biggest question here is, and I'm dying to know, where would you go, DC? Okay, where would I go? All right. Everybody knows that I am a conspiracy theorist down here, right? I, I know the, the truth about things, and we're going to have a conspiracy episode down the pike. But if I had a time machine, I would go back to November... 22nd, I knew you were going to say 1963, that. two hours before they whacked JFK. I would have my cell phone. I would have another hidden camera somewhere. You know, and they I, made a TV show about this. Well, it, mine, mine's going to be real, though, okay? And I would actually see what really, really happened. I mean, we all know that it wasn't just Oswald that was in on it. Oswald was the patsy. There were people behind the grassy knoll. If you watch any of that footage... Lyndon B. Johnson. I don't think I don't think the vice president was in the grassy knoll with the no, rifle. No, but he was involved. It was the CIA. He, they I'm, had him whack. So are you making changes though, or are you just going to watch I'm it just, happen? I'm witnessing it, yep. taping it, and then I'm going to travel ahead to the Warren Commission where they're saying, "Oh, there was one single shooter," and I'm going to walk in and go, "Look, scumbags! Look what I have on my iPhone!" And watch this right now. <laughs> you know, it's funny. You know, we be talking about time machines. That's probably why we would never ever. In our lifetime or the next, ever see a time machine developed because of the ramifications of things that could be discovered. Oh, we would screw it up. Well, so no, bad. you can think about it. 
Even even if you even if they de- developed a machine that you can go back and not physically be physically involved, but you could actually see what happened in the past, yeah. it would never be allowed because you'd find out the truth to all these things. You'd find out who shot JFK. Yep. You'd find out you know who if OJ really did it. Well, yeah. we already know. You'd find out what happened. Uh, you know, boomerang chest. Yeah, what happened to boomerang but chest? I mean, I mean, you'd be able to go back and witness the but, but crucifixion I, of Christ. All right, we I'm, would screw it up though as a people. I would, exactly. <laughs> but, but that's the place I'm going because I know for a fact. I mean, not just the Oliver Stone movie woke me up because I've been into conspiracies a lot longer than that. And that has been always the number one conspiracy. Yeah. You know, was 9-11 an inside job? Of course yeah. it was. I mean... Um, <clears throat> well, it, it is very interesting when you really put everything together. That you what go, really to, happened. To go back to the and just to see and say, uh-huh, or like, you know what? They were right. Yep. You know, I'm shocked <laughs> because the... the old, now, if it wasn't a conspiracy, take away the conspiracy aspect. Yeah. What other event would you go to? What else would I travel to? What other event? Pick one <clears throat> event, and I think I might know the answer. Okay, you're probably probably th- thinking I'd go to the opening day of Star Wars, yes. right? Yes. Okay, no. I, I would no? actually, I would go to the opening day of Empire Strikes Back. Why? Oh, just to be a dick. What I would do <laughs> is I would get inside a, a big, big, big vehicle that no one could tip <laughs> over and whatnot, and have a bullhorn, not not a bull Montana horn, and, get, and say, guess what? Who Darth Vader is? <laughs> <laughs> you're never gonna. Yeah. I, I can't believe that, that Darth Vader is Luke Skywalker, and then you're gonna find out in the next movie it's Princess Leia's dad too. Just yeah, but you know what though? I don't think people would believe you until it actually happened. Then they go, "Oh my god!" What I would do just to be a real dick? I would take out my iPhone again and play it on Netflix and say, "Look, <laughs> that would just ruin yeah." But it. would the internet work back then? There was no internet. Back I have then. it downloaded on the phone. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. I, I just have to check ch- in the cloud and then he just okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. that's what I right. would. That's, that's what I would do down okay. there. Unbelievable, Colonel. That that was a fascinating. Uh, you would travel back to see a baseball team not win the World Series. Most people would travel back to like the when they won it back what 1918, 13, whatever. Last it was. time was 1918, before 2004. All right, so all right, oh, yeah, 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 I'll give you another one. Yeah. Okay, they I'll go not. back to 69. What happened in 1969 in Boston? Uh, well, in 1969, I don't know what happened in Boston, but we supposedly landed on the moon, which I don't think happened either, because now all of a sudden you see Stanley Kubrick's daughter is defending her father, saying, oh, no, he, he didn't stage the moon landing in a movie and whatnot. That was all real. But, but, but what happened in Boston in 1969? Boston Bruins won the Stanley Cup, didn't they? Ni- no, no. <laughs> they won it in 1970 <laughs> and then 1972. They, well, actually, Bull, Bull, you're right. No, Bull, right. no, actually, Bulls, no, right. The, win- the, the season started in 1969, and they won it technically in 1970 because you oh, go the hockey season goes through. The I don't. Year. I have no clue that. Obviously, you don't have gray. But no, he's not a Bulls. Gray Sports right Almanac that. down there. But what are you saying? I just have no idea how they keep the dates straight. What? Who won? Hey, what listen. When you bet world. like I do in bull, you know. I mean, come on. I mean, you know me. I got the bookies, the lake breakers. Yeah, I mean, I know the guys. Yeah. You got to know your stuff. Now, Colonel, <clears throat> we were going to have a surprise for you on the program tonight. Well, excuse me for a second. Okay. We are missing someone. Where is Hollywood? Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Okay. Where I was, is Joel? I was going to mention that before I was so rudely interrupted by you. So I was sure. I said we were going to have a surprise for you. Hollywood Joel and I came up with a grand idea over the week. We were going to have you drink a barbecue smoothie. Now, in oh. this barbecue smoothie, yeah, tell me oh, about it. Was going to consist of barbecue items that we were going to blend and you to drink. Stuff like hot dogs, salsa, potato chips, ketchup, mustard, a whole onion, <laughs> all, all, and, and mix in some soda and all that other stuff. And you were going to suck it down. But Hollywood Joel had car trouble this week. He couldn't make it. We tried. I even said we'd send up a limo or an Uber. He just couldn't make it. Bring in the C team. So what we're going to do <laughs> is on our next episode... You are going to have. You better not bail on this because we're going to track you down. I get a, I get an engagement on that. <laughs> no, don't give me that. You have an engagement. You have an engagement to drink this. All right. <laughs> it's a barbecue smoothie. You're into health food now. Oh, wait a second. Hold on, because I have, on good authority, knowledge. Yeah. That a particular woman from New York, former cab driver, who goes by the name. Of velvet, uh oh, is in town. Oh my God! So now, that, 
he, that may be his engagement. I just know she's in town. It's going down. And it's down. funny because if you look at the shitty grin on his face, yeah. he knows exactly yeah. what I'm talking about. Now, what Colonel. What are you going to do to her? Now, Colonel, you wouldn't disappoint the fans out there by not showing up because we know where you hang out. We know where you live. So you just better come next week. And drink your barbecue smoothie. And drink smoothie. your barbecue smoothie because it has to happen before the end of the summer. Wait, wait. I have an idea. What about a contest? What about the barbecue smoothie versus the Chinese food smoothie with the boomerang? Oh, I don't want to even I, see I, a I, I, food we'll, 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 Maybe we'll do that on Chinese New Year. But oh, that would I work. Think, I, think, I think one disgusting smoothie at, Jeff's at the face. time. Jeff's like, oh, no. And you know what I think, TC? No, what is that, Chris? I bet Bull would definitely drink the barbecue smoothie. Yeah. But I know Vinny wouldn't. Whoa! Don't put me in. Oh, okay, so, so there's a little. I tell you what. Right, okay, okay. I do the challenge. I get a challenge. The boomerang. I get a challenge. The boomerang kid. To what? To the smoothie. To, to the smoothie concert. I, are you up for that boomerang? Oh. Uh, he's, he's, he's not going to do it. I'll drink a strawberry smoothie. Okay, that's that's different. All right. So next week on the program. All right. You will come down here at the end. We're going to do it at the end of the show in case you, in case something happens to you, like you turn into a metamorphosis and turn into the incredible. I, ain't Hulk gonna, of, I won't. I won't turn into metamorphosis. Okay. What if you turn into planet? Um, <laughs> but I we should bring planet down here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get an ingredients list from our fans out there who can tweet me at After Hours TC. Everybody here on the panel. All right. I'm going to go with a hot dog. We're definitely going to have a hot dog in there. South Boston, Jeff, what do you want to see in the barbecue smoothie? Um, d- d- uh, definitely barbecue sauce. Barbecue sauce. What flavor of barbecue sauce, Colonel, since you're going to be one down in this? Well, uh, oven pit. I mean, what what, what do you want? Like, uh, hickory smoke? J.R. Barbecue sauce. I didn't say what brand. What flavor? Whatever flavor he... Okay, all right. You're, you're, you're not picky then, huh? Picky. No. Okay, so we have a hot dog, barbecue sauce, and Wolf Chris, what's in the smoothie? The barbecue smoothie for Colonel Bull Montana. Ah, uh, let me think here. you got to have corn at a barbecue, Ooh. right? Ooh. Well, maybe a cob? We'll put a whole cob <laughs> in there? You know what they say, corn today, corn tomorrow. <laughs> So, Colonel, this is but this is actually pretty healthy so far. You got the protein See of the, the hot dog, the flavor of the barbecue sauce, and the nutrients of the corn. All right, boomerang. What what do you want to have inside the smoothie? Um, I don't know. Come Tomatoes. on, what, what do you have at a barbecue? What do you want? What, what do you what do you have at barbecue? How about you pick the soda? Soda, yeah. What, what flavor? Coke. Coke. A reg- Coke or Diet Coke? Coke? Diet Coke. All right, a Diet Coke. That's what Boomerang Chastain wants to add to this equation down there. Okay, Vinny, you're nodding. you got a big smile on your face. <laughs> you know why? Because I'm going to spice it up for him. What are you going to spice it up with? Buffalo. B- make it. I'll be nice. Boneless. Buffalo chicken. Boneless buffalo okay. chicken. A double dose of protein in there, huh? That's not so bad. Hot dogs <laughs> and chicken. Right. Barbecue the sauce. going to throw you texture-wise, right? Yeah. Right. Barbecue sauce. And then Diet a little spice Coke. with the with Diet the Coke. Diet Coke is going to kind of, yeah. And then the spice from the boneless buffet. Yeah, and I don't challenge. know what Hollywood Joel is going to add to this, so we'll find out next week. Wait, what are you adding to it? I have a hot dog. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. So what do you think, Colonel? Are, are you game for no this? No hamburgers, I noticed. I don't want him to get like E. coli or any of that jar of the junk down. And then we have a brand new. Then when the podcast pan no, no, his no, colon's just going to go E. coli. Yeah. On his we'll go throw a hot dog in it too. That doesn't matter. Well, people can eat raw hot dogs. I don't need no people to eat raw hamburgers. Oh, it's all going to. Have be you ever raw? watched Rocky? What about the corn is cooked? No, 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 no. Oh boy. No, no, no. There's nothing cooked in this. He's going to corn his cob over here. Okay, right. Yeah. Uh, Taking so, the husk off of it or? No. I'll go for it. You're going to go now. He, look at that. Oh, oh there it is. Go for it's it. It's official. Okay. Colonel, good for you, brother. But, Colonel, I didn't ask you, or did I? What do you want in it? You already asked me. I already told you. Talking to the microphone so the world you can hear you. You already asked me. I said I want Jay Oz Bobby. Okay, barbecue sauce. okay. okay. He, he already said that. Jeff, you can have no, double barbecue. I call the first. Well, uh, All right, well, then Jeff, I get in. Then? Uh, well, then, uh, well, you can't have a barbecue without potato salad. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Throw a chunk of that in oh, there. Oh, extra onion. Look, look at 
Bull is actually salivating over there. Right now. Is he with egg or no egg? Uh, no, it, it's, egg. It's, it's, I'm going to get the uh, market the egg. market basket home style potato there salad. Go. There you I'm going to make a little trip on uh, next week. So here's the ingredients, ladies and gentlemen. Mine is Hollywood Joel's. I don't know what his is going to be. We have a hot dog, potato salad, corn on the cob, diet coke, and uh, what was oh boneless buff- buffalo chicken? Boneless buffalo chicken with barbecue sauce, Colonel. Mmm. Jr's barbecue. A uh, Jr's barbecue sauce. And this is blended. This is going to be mixed in a blender. So it's going to be just a slurry. It's, You're going to just be able to suck it down through a straw. No, no, he's he's got to guzzle it right from the blender. Oh, God. Right from the blender. Right from the blender. And we're going to off the press. And we're actually going to have a camera rolling, so people don't think we're faking this. This is going to be a camera rolling when you do this, Colonel. We're going to make hey, a champion out of you. We should get that little pill camera that you can swallow, and we could videotape oh. the whole process. I didn't even want to think about that. Uh, Colonel, so you, oh. are, you, are, you are game for this, my friend, right? I am game. All right. You're telling the entire world, all of our listeners out there, all the people who follow us at After Hours TC out there, you are going to do a barbecue smoothie on the next show. I am. All right. You want to shake on it? It's a deal. I'm, I'm going to do it. <laughs> no, he's, he's doing it. Okay, you know what? Yeah, he's a man of his word. Matter of fact, you know what? I'll make sure to hook up a bull, and I'll, yeah. and I'll, I'll prep him. What I'll do is I'll take him to, like, some, some smoothie place, and I'll make him some, like, crazy smoothie just so he can stomach get his stomach ready for this. Right. This is nice to see. And now, Colonel— This is so nice to see because Vinny and Bull— had such a rivalry there with the, oh they uh, did they did last competition now Vinny's yeah but you know what though help. that was a rivalry out of love that's yeah. it. I've known Bull so long we go so far back I mean it's just me and Bull you would, you don't need a time machine how far back you've gone with him <laughs> yeah, well, so true. Colonel well, the places I've been with him <laughs> all right Colonel so that that's it we are signed sealed and delivered next week is the barbecue smoothie Colonel Bull Montana is going to drink this and any uh, final words right now Colonel I'm ready bring it on you're ready bring it on. Uh, ricochet, Chastain, or Boomerang. Well, any any final words ricochet's there? Ricochet's better. <laughs> what do you got? What do you got? What do you got to say there? We're signing off the program. Say something to your fans. Bo, good luck. Oh. Thank you. Uh, okay there. Uh, what, what, what's your name? Oh yeah, Vinny Kelly. Just want to do a shout out to a uh, buddy of mine over in this fine city of Malden. Spatter for a choppers. Phenomenal motorcycle. Oh work. yeah, the best around. Unbelievable. Absolutely best around. If you need motorcycle work. Go down and ask for Ray Ray. All right, Ray Ray, South Boston Jeff. You have any final words for this uh, uh, episode here? Uh, well, uh, if you want some real good uh, fried clams or a great double cheeseburger and great fishing, go down to Castle Island. That's just uh, South Boston. That's if I want some good all clam, all. I'll go somewhere else. Well, <laughs> that's just all I have to say. Yeah, Jeff out. <laughs> okay. Airwolf Chris, you're making your uh, debut on the program here. Uh, any final thoughts? Uh, no, I just say uh, thank, thanks for listening to the show, and uh, we have fun doing it. And TC, thanks for having me on. Unbelievable. All right. Pleasure to be on with all you gentlemen. My final words are Even always. Ricochet over there. <laughs> ricochet Chastain. Ricochet Chastain. My final words are remember, this is After Hours, and we what? We, we never, never close. close.